Let's go to the book of Revelation. Grab the book of Revelation, and then we're going to go to the book of Luke after that. Thank the Lord. Lord, bless the word today as it comes out of my mouth. Let it be the words that we need to hear. Let there be a stirring among us, and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Everybody say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Revelation 3 and verse 15, reading down. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Let's also read, you want to hold that, we'll come back to it. Let's also read Luke chapter 22 and verse 54. Luke 22 and 54. I'll try not to preach too long to you. Just try to obey the Lord and not add anything additional. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. Talking about Jesus just a little while before his crucifixion. And Peter followed afar off. There are too many Christians following Jesus afar off. Amen. Amen. We need to follow closely. Yes. Peter was following afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him. She stared at him and said, this man was also with him, was also with him. Jesus. You go back to Revelation 3.17. Isn't it something here where we can see that so many people, even Christians, are in a predicament. God is saying that they cannot even see themselves. They cannot see their own life, that they are in such a mess spiritually that God says, Thou knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. God was not talking to the sinner there. Right. He was talking to some of his own people that have been saved. Right. Amen. We can let ourselves get in a condition of backsliding right. and, and, and comfortable with not praying and, and having church as just an option to us if we're going to go. And uh, that is not what God wants, of course. And we know that we, we cannot afford to be lukewarm. We're not living in a lukewarm hour. The world is lukewarm. Amen. But it's not time for the church to be lukewarm. It's time for the church to have a fire. Somebody say a fire. It's time for the church to have a fire on the inside. Hallelujah. I want that fire of the Holy Ghost. I said I want that fire of the Holy Ghost. We look at this little story about Peter in his backsliding condition. As Jesus had already told him, he says, before the cock crows three times, he says, you will deny me. Right. And Peter was arrogant and said, Lord, I will never deny you. Then he's following at a distance. And, and, and when they took Jesus into the hall, into this place, began to talk to him and persecute him. And those others that were following, they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall. Right. And they all sat together, but Peter sat down among them. Uh -huh. Amen. I want to say to us, it's not enough to sit down by somebody else's fire. Right. Amen. I've got to build my own fire. Same I've got to have my own fire. Same. Amen. This was the problem with Peter. His, his fire was going out. Amen. His fire was, was fading. Amen. The heat of the flame was, was going out. It was just smoldering coals. 
Amen. There's got to be times that we feel like, hey, we're slipping a little bit. We're, we haven't prayed the last few days like we need to. We, we've been a little carnal minded. Hallelujah. Amen. What we've got to do is get back to the fire and we've got to put some oxygen on the fire. Amen. We've got to, we've got to fan the flames, so to speak. Amen. We've got to build a new fire. Amen. Amen. It's not good enough for me to come to church and just enjoy your fire. Amen. It's not just good enough for me to come to church and feel the, the heat and the flame of your fire. Amen. But I've got to come and build my own. I've got to build my own fire. I've got to have my own flame. Amen. The Bible says that his angels, his ministers are as a flame of fire. Hallelujah. And his angels as ministering spirits. Amen. Every one of us are ministers. We may not all be preachers in a pulpit but we're all ministers and we need to be as a flame of fire yes, amen. we need to be as a flame of fire oh God help me to build a fire even that others can come and be warmed by Lord, those that are not saved, but God, help me not to be so slack and be so carnal. Oh, God, and so cold away from the flame. So lukewarm, oh, God, but God, stir my soul, stir my mind, stir my heart, oh, Lord. Oh, God, that I'll be on fire for God like I've never been before. We're just sitting. We've got to be careful that we're not, we're not getting cold in our soul. <clears throat> there are some people in our lives, and you probably know people that they're, they're, they're human fire extinguishers. I mean, they are spiritual fire extinguishers. I mean, you can get around these carnal people, maybe family that's not serving God, Christians that are carnal, Christians that are cold and lukewarm, and, and you can get around them and they'll say, hey, it's snowing outside. Uh, you know, people are missing church. Why are you even bothering going? You know, you've got a headache anyway. Why don't you just stay home? They're fire extinguishers is what they are. Amen. Why don't we go to church? We go to build the flame a little bit bigger. Amen. We're coming to build a spiritual bonfire. Amen. I don't want to fire by myself, but if I have to have it, I will. I want to build a flame with you. I want to build a fire with you. Hallelujah. That it'll get attention. That others can can come and be warm, but why do they say, hey, listen, I, I'm not bothering with that today. Oh, you don't have to go to church all the time. It's not necessary. Wednesday night church, oh, I'm saved. Listen, you don't have to go to church. You know, they tell you you have to go to church. Oh, they tell you, oh, everybody needs a pastor. Listen, I don't go to church hardly at all, but I'm living for God and I'm ready for heaven. Who's going to tell me that I'm not ready for? You know what they are? They're, they're spiritual fire extinguishers. They have no fire. They are, they are what God described right here. Wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked spiritually. Not talking about naturally. Spiritually speaking, they're naked in the eyes of God. They're, they're, they're blind that they cannot see. They're poor without God. They're miserable and wretched people. Thinking they're all right with God. And they have forsaken the assembling. They, they, they won't worship God. Their fire has gone out. They have just enough maybe to get it going again if somebody can stir it up. If they somehow can, can see their need, somehow can see their condition. One, one verse says they have eyes but cannot see. They have ears but they cannot hear. They have a heart but cannot understand <clears> hey <throat> man, I guess the question here today is are we sitting by the fire? I don't want to just sit by the fire. I want to build a fire. Hey Amen. You want to write this down. Four fires I'm going to give you that you need. You need four fires in your life. And the fire of, you can write four times underneath one another. The fire of, and I'm going to finish those out for you. Those, those short statements there the fire of number one we need every one of us must have the fire of uh the prayer warrior 
Amen. We need the fire of a prayer warrior. I need the fire of a prayer warrior. Amen. I'm not talking about somebody that only prays their little prayer when they come to church. But I'm talking about that passion and that fire. Amen. That I pray every day at home. Number two is the fire of the soul winner. That, that something on the inside where I've got to reach people wherever I am, who, wherever I go, there's something inside of me that says reach for him, reach for her, talk to them. I've got to have the fire yes. of a soul winner. Yes. The fire of the soul winner. Number three is the fire of the worshiper. So many churches, their fire of worship has gone out. Oh, you go to some churches and the entire congregation sits during the entire uh, congregational singing. They sit through the whole worship service. They don't even have enough zeal. They have enough, don't have enough even to get up on their feet. Uh, church, we've got to have something about us. There's got to be a fire in us. You know why? They're like that because they don't worship God at home. They don't pray at home. They don't have this thing at home. So how can they have it at church? Right. And number four is the fire of holiness. The fire of holiness will burn away the sin. The fire of holiness will say, no, don't do that. The fire of holiness will say, no, don't go with them. The fire of holiness will say, no, don't act that way. The fire of holiness will burn things out of our heart. Amen. Like my wife was talking a little while ago, you know, things that we should not have there. That fire in us of holiness will begin to burn those things away. We'll begin to remove those things and burn out those things. Amen. So that we might present ourselves holy under the Lord. Right. Amen. Amen. Fire. I liken the word fire uh, uh, as unto a zeal. Or fire, fire can be called a passion. Uh, a fire can be called commitment. A fire can be called energy. We need the zeal and the passion and the commitment and the energy of a prayer warrior. Yes, we need the zeal, the passion, the commitment, and the energy of a soul winner. Yes. We need the zeal, the passion, the commitment, and the energy of a worshiper. Yes. We need the zeal, the passion, the commitment, and the energy holiness we need these characters these characteristics in our heart Jesus said in Matthew 3 and verse 11 or was it John the Baptist said I indeed baptize you with water <coughs> unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help us to have the fire of your spirit. Oh, God, help us to have the zeal of God. One Old Testament writer said, The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. We need a zeal, church. We need a passion, people. Come on, we need a hunger. Amen. Say, well, people are staying home from church. Some people are staying home, but we're going to find some people to get to the house of God. Yeah. Come on, Sister Velma. Keep on bringing them to church. You're going to win some souls. Keep on doing it. Let God use you. Come on now. Amen. We got to have a fire. We got to have a zeal. We got to have a passion. Hallelujah. We're living in the last days. Sure, the Bible talks about a great falling away but I believe even though there may be a great falling away and a lot of people are backsliding there's people quitting the church amen there's a lot of people that are half hearted they're cold in their soul amen they're, they don't have the fire they're lukewarm they're cold amen but I believe in the middle of all that I believe that there's a great outpouring happening I believe that the revelation of God is happening. Amen. We're going to keep praying. We're going to believe God. We're going to keep pushing forward. We're not going to look and believe what we see with our eyes. It's not what we, we should not believe 
what we see with our eyes and hear with our ears unless it's the word of God. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, renew us. Build that fire within. Build that fire in our soul. Oh, God, today, build a fire in our hearts. In the name of Jesus. You know, it says in the Song of Solomon that it is the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's the little foxes. He said, take us the little foxes that spoil the vine. And somebody interpreted that as uh, take us the little foxes. And in other words, we're, we're to blame for spoiling the vine. Well, I guess you could preach it that way, but I don't necessarily believe that's what he was talking about. I believe there's little things in our life that put out the fire. I believe just little attitudes sometimes, little grudges, little, little things of unforgiveness. Amen. We can let those things stay in our spirit and stay in our heart. Amen. And next thing you know, we've got, we have a hard time worshiping. We have a hard time going to prayer. We have a hard time praying through. Why? Because sometimes those little foxes in our life are spoiling the vine. Amen. They're, they're putting out the fire that God, amen, has given us. There's a spiritual disease, amen, and I call it a spiritual disease of apathy. We've heard that word apathy. And it's, it's more than just something spiritual, but when we take a look at spiritual apathy, uh, the word apathy means a lack of interest. Amen. Why are so many people today, and not everyone, and I'm not trying to preach a doom and gloom or a negative message, not at all, but there is a spiritual apathy with so many. Amen. The, the, the fella can get him a girlfriend, or the girl can get a, a, a boyfriend. Amen. If that's the best thing, you know, the devil can use to get on somebody's mind and get their mind off of God, and then they don't want to go to church anymore. And everybody thinks nowadays dating is committing fornication. Amen. Those that are laying in bed with one another and they're not married to one another. They're not dating. They're committing fornication. It's sin. Amen. And they're not right with God. Amen. There's a lot of it going on today. People are shacking up. Nowadays, uh, as somebody will say, talk about his wife or some woman will talk about her husband. Come to find out they've been together nine years, but they're not even married. Amen. That's not their husband and their wife. Amen. That's their shacking partner. That's their fornicator partner. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. They don't see sin as sin anymore. Right. Amen. People are losing their fire. Yeah. Amen. Not everybody. I believe some of us in here today, our fire is getting bigger. We're getting a stronger determination. Our mind, amen, we're looking straight ahead. Were we forgetting those things which are behind? We're forgetting those things which are, have passed us. We're forgetting yesteryear. Amen, we're letting go of the hurts. We're letting go of the anger. We're letting go of whatever the devil has accused us of. I'm not going to live in the past. How about you? I'm going to live for Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, he is my future. I said, he is my future. I'm going to keep my eyes on the prayer. I'm going to stay fired up. You got to keep stirring the flame. Somebody say, stir the flame. You got to stir the flame. You got to stir your own flame up. You got to stir it up. You got to stir your flame. You got to stir it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So apathy is a lack of interest, a lack of enthusiasm, a lack of concern. That's happening with some that are slipping away. They lose their enthusiasm about church. They lose the concern of their own soul. Amen. They, 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 they can go to church on Wednesday, but then they miss church on Wednesday night. Then Thursday morning they get up and go to, they get up and go to work. Well, they had a headache on Wednesday night. Well, they had a headache all day, but they went to, went to work. They had a headache again on Thursday, but they went to work. Why did they have to miss church? Amen. Church ought to be the most important thing in our life. Amen. It ought to be more important than our job. It ought to be more important than our family. I want to see my family saved, but I'm not going to give up God for my family. Amen. I want my family to come and get the fire. I'm not going to let them cause me to backslide. I'm not going to treat them wrong because of God and the church. Amen. I'm not going to do that either. Amen. But I'm going to love them. 
Judas started slipping away, didn't he? See, Judas had his mind on the money. Judas had his mind on the offering. Judas had his mind on a few silver coins, a free gold coin, a few gold coins that he wanted to get his hands on. He got his mind on the money, got his mind off of Jesus. Some people could never go to church and they could never live for God because they just can't even pay their tithes. So therefore they quit going to church because their money means more to them, amen, than anything. I mean, I don't want money to mean more to me. I don't want this world or anything part of it. I don't want to have it mean more to me than God. No, no, no. I want God to mean more to me than money, than anything. Hallelujah. So Judas started slipping. We think about Samson. Samson, God is, he, he couldn't live for God consistently because of the women in his life. He had to have some women. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a lot of good Christian people. They got to have their man. They got to have their woman. Amen. They, they have a hard time living for God because they got to have that person. Amen. They can't get married, but they got to have that man. They can't get married, but they got to have that woman. I don't want to fall like Samson in the lap of Delilah. Amen. To never rise again. And when he does rise, he rises one last time to his death. Pushes the pillars out. The building collapses and Samson dies. <clears throat> I don't want that to be my last testimony. Amen. No. What about Demas? Most Christians haven't heard about anything about Demas. He's only mentioned a couple of times in the New Testament. And Paul mentions it one time and says that Demas was with him. And another time he mentions Demas and he says, Demas has forsaken, forsaken me. Loving this present world. Demas was a preacher. No doubt he was a trainee of Paul. No doubt he was maybe a, a, a future apostle. Maybe a, a pastor in training. I don't know the status exactly. But he was a trainee of, past, uh, 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 of the apostle Paul. And, and, and that, at that point he had left Paul, and Paul said he has forsaken me, and he went to Thessalonica. He went to the city where the bright lights were. He went down there to the clubs. He went down there to the boats. He went, he went to do his thing. He went to live the thing, amen, that was pressing on his mind. He had stopped stirring the flame. He had stopped stirring the flame, amen, somewhere he let it die out. He let the flame die away. He let the flame die out of his life but church every day we've got to stir the flame every day we got to stir the fire every day we got to put some oxygen on the fire can we say amen, amen. hallelujah Demas backslid and left Paul Lot's wife got her mind on the world she left Sodom and Gomorrah with her husband with Lot and with the daughters she left Sodom and Gomorrah, but she could not withhold. She could not obey God very long because the Lord said, don't look back when you leave Sodom. You know what that tells us, church? We don't need to look back to the world where we used to, what the things we used to do. We don't need to reminisce too much in the life we used to live. Well, we don't need to reminisce too much and laugh and talk about the sins we used to do. We don't need to, we don't need to glee over that too much because we might start, amen, letting something sprout up inside of us, amen, that don't need to live again. Oh, I don't want, to, I don't want my past sins, I don't want them to live in me again. John the Baptist said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, with fire. You know, the Holy Ghost is not a spare tire in God's trunk. No, he's not. The Holy Ghost is not a spare tire. But Christianity has made out like the Holy Ghost is, is a spare tire. It's just an extra gift. It's something that you can get as an extra blessing. But the Apostle Paul said, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The Holy Ghost is not an option. Believing on Jesus is not an option. Because I believed on Jesus, that does not indicate that the Holy Spirit came in. Because I accepted Jesus as my personal Savior does not mean that the Holy Spirit came in. But the Holy Ghost will identify himself when he comes in. 
He will identify himself with a language that you never learned in school. He will give you a language to speak. James says that the tongue is the unruly member of our body. That the tongue is the member of our body that we cannot tame. It's the only member that we cannot tame. But I tell you what, when you get the Holy Ghost, God is going to tame your tongue. God is going to give you a language to speak that you never learned before. And that's the sign and the, the, the that is the sign of the Holy Ghost. That is what the Holy Ghost gives to prove He has come in. Amen. You know, in the Old Testament, it was common. God had given to the priests to offer a sacrifice. It was given even when Abraham went to sacrifice his son on the Mount Moriah. When the priests would go into and offer a lamb as a burnt offering, when they would go in to offer even the incense upon the altar uh, as a sweet-smelling savor unto the Lord, even when, was it David, when he was walking through the city and they had carrying the ark, and I believe that every five paces or so, whatever it was, the Bible says that they sacrificed they only took several steps before they stopped and sacrificed. It was more than the cutting of the throat and the blood pouring down in a basin. It was much more than that. But all of those different sacrifices included one other thing. It included a fire. There had to be a fire in the sacrifice. Honey, there's got to be a, 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 there's got to be a fire in, in our worship. There's got to be fire in our preaching. There's got to be fire in our praying. Hallelujah. There's got to be fire in everything we do. Because if there is no fire in our sacrifice, the sacrifice is not acceptable. There's got to be fire. God will not accept what you do for him if you do not have a fire. There's got to be a consuming Fire! Yes. Holy Ghost and fire. We need to examine our own worship sometime. And I don't mean me examining you and you examining somebody else. I need to examine my worship. You need to examine your worship. And say, was I worshiping with fire today? When was the last time, time I prayed with fire? Hallelujah. When was the last time I sacrificed unto the Lord with fire? When was there fire in my soul? The prophet Jeremiah, we can all quote, he says, like a fire shut up in my bones. There's something about this zeal, this passion, this hunger, this thirst that we've got to have for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Passion. Sacrifice. God baptizes. Baptizes. Fresh. Baptizes afresh. Baptizes again. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, let it be more than a church event. But God baptize the people in their homes. Lord, let the people even today, oh, in the name of Jesus, let their homes be a place of worship. Let their automobiles be a place of worship. Lord, let our souls be burning with a passion and with a fire that even in the middle of the night, God, that it eats us up. There'll be such a hunger for you. And you know, I believe that we need to have friends in the church. And I believe that we need to build relationships. And if everybody was here, I would say it to everyone. But let me say it to us. And maybe I'll say it again if I think about it. But you know, there was people here at our dinner last week. And I noticed that some of those guests in our dinner did not have any of us 
communicating fellowship with him at dinner. Some of them were just kind of to themselves. Church, we have got to befriend these people when they come in. We've got to reach out. Amen. I need to reach out to your friends that you bring. You need to reach out to my guests when I bring. We need to reach out to one another. We need to build relationships. Because if we're not building relationships, people are not going to feel a connection of the fire. Fire will spread. I cannot, it's, it's not right for me to contain my fire in my own little space. I've got to spread my fire. Now, back a couple weeks ago, my wife and I, we went to uh, the, the Chicago History Museum. It wasn't the Museum of Natural History. It was the Museum of the Chicago History. We had never been there. It was all about Chicago. And, and, and one of the events, they even had a, uh, a, a theater about the, uh, depicted part of it was about the Chicago fire. And they had uh, areas about the Chicago fire. And that fire began to spread. Amen. Building after building after the hundreds of buildings caught on fire. Amen. Why? Because of the building next to it. We need to have such a fire in us. Yes. I believe that when somebody is sitting next to you, on your row or behind you or in front of you, you may or may not know them, but they need to feel your fire. Listen. Honey, you need to be plugged into the outlet over here, so to speak, next to you. You, you need to be plugged into that 220, and they get enough uh, of you, they're going to feel some electricity. They're going to feel some passion. They're going to feel some power. They're going to feel some fire, hallelujah, that they cannot leave this place uh, without saying that God was in the house. Amen, that I felt the flame of the fire, and it felt good, and I want to go back. Oh, come on, church. Let's stir it up. Let's stir up the flame, and let's do it. Maybe the other people here that are not here today because of the weather and because of sickness, when they get here next week, and they say, I'm glad I'm in the house of God, let them know that you got a new fire. You may not have to say anything, but I've been plugged into the power of God. I've been plugged into a 220. Amen. I'll stir up a flame. Amen. And let them feel what you've got. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, I don't always feel like it. Show me in the Bible where it says you have to feel like it. We walk by faith and not by feelings. There are times that I have got to exemplify my fire when I don't feel like it. Amen. I have got to, I've got to express my zeal. I've got to express my fire. I've got to express my faith. Amen. When I don't feel like it. Why? Because I walk by faith and not by sight. One man stood in a pulpit years ago, not here, and he ridiculed worship. Oh, yeah, he was apostolic. Ridiculed worship. Said, well, I don't believe in all that jumping around and all that dancing unless God just makes you do it. In other words, what he meant was he expected God to get him up and give him certain gyrations and move him about like some kind of a little ping pong ball bouncing around on the ping pong table. And this God did that, and he, he did. He didn't move. He believed it was flesh. Right. All right. I, I, I just said to him, then why do you clap your hands? Right. Is God physically taking your arms and slapping your hands together? Why do you lift your arms? Is God lifting your arms? Right. No, we should worship God. Right. Amen. Amen. The Bible says to leap for joy. Yes. The Bible says dance before the Lord. And D David danced before the Lord with all of his might. Yes. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Yes. hallelujah. Somebody lift their hands. I love the Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, give us enough fire. We walk out there and that snow it melts all around the air where we walk. 
Hallelujah, Lord, just let it, just let it melt underneath the, the, our vehicles as we go home. In the name of Jesus, let there be a fire, God, in every video, in every advertisement for this church, the internet, everything we've got out there to reach the lost. God, let them feel the fire of the Holy Ghost when the people sit on their iPhones and in front of their computers and they see that, let them feel the fire of God, let them feel the zeal until it eats them up, until they say, I've got to do something, i got to get there. Oh, yes. We're living in the last days. We are. We're living in, in an hour now where holiness it, it, it is made fun of. See, because you can shout and talk in tongues and you can do all that and, and be a Jezebel. Amen. You can, I mean, you can have more paint on than the farmer's new barn. I mean, you can, you can look like whatever you want to look like and talk in tongues and everybody. It's okay to do anything, to live any way. I mean, it just doesn't matter what you do nowadays. You can, you can just do what you want and go to heaven. They, they, they think. But let me tell you, so I believe that there is a fire of separation. I believe there was a fire in our lives, and if we'll listen to it, it'll say, don't do this and do that. Amen. Don't do this and do that. God will lead us if we listen. Oh, holiness. Holiness is a fire. Praise God. Holiness is a fire in our soul that we need. People have apathy toward God. But you take those same people, they want, a, they want a passionate marriage. They want a passionate relationship with their spouse. They don't want apathy with their husband or their wife, but they've got apathy with God. Just nonchalant, come in the church, just take it or leave it. I might be there, I might not. If I got time, I'll go. If I'm not busy, I'll go. No, no, that's apathy. God's not looking for us to have apathy. No, no, no. You know what we ought to do? We, we need to express coming early and staying late, and praying long and loud, worshiping loud, worshiping with fire. Hallelujah. The devil, I refuse to stay in my seat. I refuse. I refuse. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to back down to that lion devil. I said I refuse. Can somebody say I refuse? I refuse. In the name of Jesus, I believe.